So now we're going to go into the BC era for something interesting. And uh, Billy, where are you? I just... Uh... Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that's what you wanted to point everyone's attention to. <laughs> Alexander. This is this guy? A very popular Greek name, and for a good reason, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> uh, this is the Battle of Arbela, or Gogamela, and it takes place in the year 331 BC. So now we go to uh, ancient Greece, the Hellenistic Age of Alexander the Great, one of the greatest... Uh, uh, heroes and important figures of the ancient world and especially of Greece. Right. So the Battle of Arbela, Darius II, is the enemy. He is the king of the Achaemenid Empire. This is the yeah. greatest empire of the ancient world. Uh, if you want to reference the Old Testament, the prophecy of Daniel, uh, there were like four great empires of the ancient times. It was the Medo Persian Empire, the Babylonians, uh, you know, like those people, and then it was the, the Greeks. So under Alexander the Great and then the Romans. So he's prophesied, he comes uh, and uh, he defeats the Persians with uh, 47,000 47, right? 47, uh, troops. troops. And he's defeating an army that's probably at least a quarter of a million to a million size to up to a million people. According to different wow. ancient sources. Yes. That's, uh, can you just imagine the odds? A million of, uh, army strong. That's, ten to, that's probably right. It's anywhere from five and higher uh, to, I mean, that's that's just tremendous odds. I mean, you're going up against. And, uh, to, oh, it's got to be. That's why he's called the Great. He's the first Great yeah. in, uh, in, uh, in ancient history. And he's not called by the Greeks the Great. He's called by the Romans that came after him, the Latin Romans. They consider him the greatest general of the ancient world, followed by Pyrrhus of Epirus, his cousin. And, right, whom we discussed uh, previously. Hannibal, that's right, yes. and Hannibal. And um, I don't know, there's so much. I mean, the Persian Empire was a tyrannical, despotic empire. It ruled most well, of the well, ancient world. Well, let's be honest. Let's yeah. be honest here. If it wasn't for the Persians, we would not have had Freddie Mercury. So, I mean, you know. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> let's give them some credit here. I mean, no, we know. don't dislike the Persians or the Iranians, but we're talking about history here. And <laughs> yes, they, no, they were the people that were going to conquer Greece and, uh, and, and Europe. And it was the uh, Athenians and the Spartans about 100 years, uh, 150 years earlier that had to stop them. And pardon me, this is this is an important point because yeah. whoever was conquered may have ceased to exist at the time. Not that they would be exterminated necessarily, but they would be assimilated and your culture could disappear theoretically if you were conquered entirely. Um, which is a little different than what happened when Alexander became a conqueror. Uh, that's, uh, George, that's a good point. Yeah. Because uh, the Persians uh, burned Athens, the Acropolis, they conquered northern Greece, uh, they held Thrace, they got you know, beaten eventually at the Battle of Salamis uh, 10 years after the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 BC. And then they still occupied the Greek colonies of Asia Minor, which is the western coast of what is now modern day Turkey, which is adjacent to the Greek islands. So all those uh, cities and colonies were still conquered and ruled under the Persians. They couldn't join the motherlands. Um, so basically, this was a pan Hellenic union that Alexander's father started, right. Philip II, to avenge. Uh, Greece to stop the Persian threat that already controlled Thrace in northeastern Greece and was meddling in internal Greek affairs. Right. Uh, they were bribing other states, uh, other colonies that were causing disruption in the Greek world and they were about to conquer it if the Greeks did not unite. Alexander united them. He uh, modernized warfare. He made it better than what it was. The hoplite armies of the past who basically ran the um, the, the the war uh, engine of uh, from the post Bronze Age up until the classical age uh, these these uh, armored people uh, they were farmers or whatever have you they had full armor things like that right uh, he kind of like upgraded the armor he made uh, the phalanx that was from his father the the, the giant spear right. that the ancient uh, other Greek states uh, had uh, from the Thebans he made it like uh, sixteen feet long. Can you imagine balancing something that big, made out of metal? A phalanx, that's like uh, the tank of the ancient world, all these soldiers. Uh, uh, that Their were, shields. The shields that were in formation, and they just uh, roamed through. Infantry, light infantry, the horses, he used them more than anybody else before. <clears throat> and he was able to uh, attack at different, uh, at different angles, the, the Persians, because the Persians used a lot of subjected peoples, and they didn't have a, a standard army that was... Uh, just an army like the Macedonians were. Uh, they were basically, they had they relied heavily on mercenaries, if I recall correctly. That's right. right. So he he also invented an, uh, a, a new armor, the lino, lino thorax. It's a leather linen type of uh, 
a cork uh, armor that's not steel. You know, it's very uh, light. Uh, it, it it deflects arrows, projectiles. I mean, equipment deflect you know modern day bullets. That was kind uh, of like Kevlar of Kevlar. sorts. Yeah. It's, the, it's the ancient Kevlar equivalent. Yeah, ancient and Kevlar. This was a secret weapon because you can wear this in battle. And you didn't have to have all this clunky metal. Yeah, you were much more mobile, yeah. and that's why that can explain partly why he was able to do so well against uh, being so heavily outnumbered. He had superior technology as well as superior strategy on his side. The Persians had cloths; right. they didn't have like armor. So the Greeks were superior. Uh, Alexander trained them so well. Uh, he used the, the best of the best, and it was a uh, the other the other invention he made, I believe, was what do we say? The 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 Hydus fists. Those were the shield bearers. Uh, another elite uh, uh, elite uh, troop that was un uh, undefeated in battles throughout uh, the next 300 years. Uh, they used the shields. They can fight with the shields. <laughs> uh, he had the light infantry, the lunothorax, the phalanx, and the sarisa, the long spear. So just these alone were enough tactics to basically crush the Persians at the Battle of Gagamela. And uh, he went down without losing a, a single soldier. That's what it was uh, from the ancient sources we have compared to the thousands and thousands oh, of yeah, the Persians Oh yeah, you can't. That's just a, that's so, amazing odds to fight a war like that. So, so. He until like the, the later battles, he was basically not only undefeated, uh, he didn't lose any soldiers, and uh, that's why he's the greatest. And he liberated the Greek cities, avenged Greece, and then eventually conquered and liberated other peoples that were subjected to the Persian Empire. This is the Battle of Gagamela, uh, 331 BC. All Hope right. you enjoyed it. <laughs>